uh, we are going to start with biotechnology. In this uh, unit of biotechnology, there are two chapters. The first is the principles and the processes, and in the second chapter, we'll be discussing about only the applications of biotechnology. So, first one is biotechnology principles and processes. In this, we'll discuss all the basic things about biotech, various techniques which we would be using, and then next chapter deals only with the application. Now, the first important thing, biotechnology one is a very recent branch of science, and father of biotechnology is Paul Berg. Let us first talk about the definition and then we'll uh, discuss few interesting things about biotech. Definition says that biotech is a process or biotechnology is a process of using living organisms or their enzymes or their molecules to obtain products or to develop processes for welfare of mankind or human beings. So basically what exactly we mean by biotechnology is we will be using or we use living organisms or their enzymes or their products or the molecules to make things which are beneficial for us. It could be anything, any product, any process, wherever we are using living organisms or their molecules for our benefit, that is biotechnology. Now, just to give you a little idea about what has been achieved so far using biotechnology. We know that in our body, insulin is synthesized. Beta cells of our islets of Langerhans, they synthesize insulin. Every individual synthesizes only that much insulin which we need to regulate our sugar metabolism, to control our blood sugar. Sometimes people who suffer from diabetes, in their body insulin is not produced in the sufficient quantity and they are advised to take insulin injections. Now, what is that inju insulin injection and where is it coming from? It is being synthesized by a prokaryote, by E. coli. What scientists have done? They have isolated this insulin producing gene from our beta cells, introduced it into E. coli. And in E. coli, this gene undergoes transcription and translation to produce insulin. We isolate the insulin from E. coli, package it, and that is being used for human welfare. So which organism is used? A small microorganism like E. coli. And gene is our gene. So by using this biotechnology, we have introduced this gene into E. coli and transformed this E. coli into a factory which is synthesizing insulin for us. This is one interesting application and it is successfully going on. Second interesting thing is about vaccines. We have heard of so many vaccines. We take these vaccines for our immunization. Polio vaccines. When we take polio vaccines, these are either weakened or killed pathogens. And we rely on the process. When we give those two drops to babies to immunize them against polio, we assume that these pathogens have been 
properly weakened or killed but there's a risk suppose even if one virus is not properly killed or weakened so we give two drops of those vaccine to immunize in a contrary or maybe as a risk factor one life pathogen enters into the body and causes the disease so maybe the risk factor is very 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 less because all these vaccines are first tested certified and then only are available uh, for us but still there is a risk now what exactly are we taking when we take this vaccine we take the protein which is pro uh, present on their capsid or capsule whenever there is a protein there has to be a gene because it is the gene which gets transcribed and translated that is how we obtain a protein so in case of a polio vaccine also we take we need that protein as an antigen that antigen when goes into our body our body synthesizes antibodies what scientists have done they have isolated this protein from the capsid of the pathogen or the virus introduced it into a plant in the plant this gene undergoes transcription and translation and plant produces that protein that is the antigen and they have successfully the scientists have successfully developed edible vaccines one such edible vaccine is banana so in banana they have introduced this gene so when we give this banana to the baby or to a child that antigen is entering into their body and the body would synthesize antibodies now here there is no risk of pathogen because we are not given even the killed or weakened pathogen we are simply given that protein this is an, another application we know about firefly firefly there is a typical uh, property it produces a protein called luciferin this protein has a property to absorb photons when the light is available when light is not available from this protein are emitted various wavelengths and that is why the insect glows in dark it's a protein the luciferin scientists have isolated this protein they have introduced it into plants in plants transcription translation of this gene takes place and a protein is synthesized and as we said the property is it is going to absorb light during day and emit light during night and they have planted these plants on the road side now there is no need of street light because these plants are going to glow during night these are some interesting things about biotech and which we have successfully done now let us talk about some historical things the first our dna recombinant dna was constructed by two scientists cohen and boyer in 1972 they actually isolated the antibiotic resistance gene from salmonella typhimurium this antibiotic resistance gene was added or introduced into the plasmid of e coli so when this plasmid of e coli was attached with this insulin uh, sorry the antibiotic resistant gene there was an r dna which was synthesized so this r dna had the plasmid of e coli and antibiotic resistance gene of salmonella typhimurium so this was the first r dna which was constructed and that was done by cohen and boyer in 1972 few more interesting things about biotech and its various things which we use
we will discuss all these things under four heads we'll be talking about all enzymes which are required for all the processes then we'll talk about vectors vectors are the carriers of that desired gene which we normally refer to as inserts so we will discuss which substance which particle can be used as vector and why what characteristics should it have next which kind of host can be used because when we introduce the gene of interest the host should also be competent enough to transcribe and translate that particular gene so we will talk about hosts and there are variety of hosts we will also understand how to make them competent enough to participate in these processes and then we will discuss all the techniques under these techniques we'll talk about gel electrophoresis we will talk about northern blotting we will also discuss southern blotting western blotting then we will also discuss pcr that is polymerase chain reaction and we will also see how to transfer the separated or isolated genetic material onto a more stable membrane and that is through transfer assembly these are the techniques which we would be discussing in details and then using all these techniques how do we obtain the product on a commercial scale so this is on commercial scale production of all these products so let us start with the enzymes and then we will take up all this this will complete the first chapter that is only the principles and processes so let us take all these enzymes in detail now.